so welcome back to python plus node uh, series and in the last episode we created the basic nest.js servers and added the websocket module and also created the um, message handlers for the input and output and we basically had the thing that was working like we were generating two random numbers at the front end and sending those to the back end where they were multiplied and sent back to the front end using websockets now the thing is what we need to do now is this multiplication part is something that is the data processing part and we will be moving this to python so to do that there is a great module out there called the python shell and i've been using this a lot and it has a great documentation so you can go through it and figure if you want to see any new features in here and everything so i'll just call install this module so I'll just take the terminal and and just do the save dev so while this is in uh, module is being installed i'll create the configuration for our python uh, shell so i'll just create a new file which will basically be our python dot config dot ts so in this file uh, we'll be exporting basically a javascript object which will have the basic configuration that we'll pass to the python shell so it is kind of similar to this object so i just like having it, it in a separate config file so we'll just create this file so the thing we'll need to import is options first uh, which is basically the configuration options from the python shell python shell and we'll also add the logger from nest.js because we will directly log the output from python shell to the nest.js logger which is really is something that i really like so that will be imported from nest.js common okay so we'll create the logger first const logger is equal to new logger and we'll give it a name python shell and we need timestamps okay and now we will export the configuration const config of type options which is the same options that have been imported from the python shell module and we'll be opening the brackets and the mode so mode is something I just forgot to add equal to so uh, the data exchange mode is uh, the way like how you want to send data through and between the python shell and the node interface so there are three options you can send text uh, js or bi uh, json or binary so we'll be using json which really makes it easy and again the next thing is python path so python path is something that makes this module really powerful so you can you need to give it to a path to a python exe so this can be a path to a conda environment or any virtual environment of python that you have created or your system default python so what i'll be using i have a base con mini conda environment and i'll be using the python path of that environment so it has some modules and so what you can have is a virtual environment for your specific project which has all your model installed like all your modules for tensorflow and scipy so you can directly give it the path of that virtual environment and it will boot up a python shell of that environment the next thing is we need to give it a scripts path so all the scripts that we want to run through the python shell like where are they located so in the app folder in our src i will just create a new folder and i'll call it scripts and we just need to give it the relative path so make sure the path to the scripts folder is relative to your workspace so i'll just give it a script path so making it relative to a workspace we have dot slash so at the top level we have apps inside that we need to go in backend and inside that we go into src inside that we go into the app folder and inside that we have the scripts folder so all our scripts will be inside here the next thing is python options 
so we just give it the flag hyphen u this will just make all the uh, like the logging we do in the python side make it print and be sent to node on real time okay and the next thing is we will do override the std error parser so what i generally do is the way the data is being exchanged between node and python is through streams so when you send data from node to python shell it will go through the standard input stream so in python side you can use the input function to get that data and anything that you print uh, on the standard output stream that is when you use the print function of python and you print it to the standard output stream that can be received by the python shell on the node side and the standard error stream is also received on the node side now the problem is since the standard output stream will be used to send the computed data and if you want to have some other kind of logging in python then what i do is i just route those logging to the standard error stream now this may not be the perfect way you can actually create a separate stream and use that but that gets a bit complicated for the scope of this series but uh, if you have the errors also they will also be logged on the standard error stream and the normal logging that you would want to do also will be logged in the standard error stream so there won't be any problem or such so what we'll do is we'll just override the error parser and in any log that's coming to this parser we'll just uh, redirect it to the nest.js logger and we'll be using the verbose category because that just prints it in a separate color rather than green it will be blue so that just makes it easier to find in the log and that's it so our python configuration uh, is done so there are many more options that can be added to this script uh, this configuration and it's up to you whether you want to use them or not so the next thing is let's see if i have time remaining yeah so the next thing is we'll need to create a service so uh, we will create a python service which will be used which can be used throughout the whole application to communicate with python so i'll just create a new file uh, in the app folder and we call this the python service.ts uh, we'll make sure it is added to the providers array first we need to implement the service so we'll need, be needing quite a few things so i'll just copy the imports so injectable is injectable and logger are pretty self-explanatory the python shell is the basic module through which we access the python shell uh, the config object is from our same python config file and uh, we'll just wrap all the events that come from python shell into observables so that will just make it easier for us to use so we'll just create an injectable injectable and we just need to and just two times I don't know why it has it two times so we'll just do export class uh, python service okay so since now our service is created we'll just quickly add it to the providers array python service we'll be using the app service also we'll just rename it and we will be using the app service later on so in the python service the first thing you always do is create a logger so private read only logger is equal to new logger and we'll give it the python service dot name and we need timestamps and the next thing we will do is hold a reference of our python shell so we'll have a shell variable of type python shell okay so now we'll add a constructor with where we will initialize the shell okay so in the constructor all we need to do is this dot shell is equal to new python shell okay now the first thing will be the path of like the name of the script that will will run so i'll just create a default python script 
a new file and just call this test dot py okay so that will be the name test dot py since we have uh, we have already specified how it started conda like uh, we don't need that it just makes everything slow i'll just disable it for the workspace and reload it the python extension is really great but sometimes it just slows down your system if you have a really big virtual environment and my conda environment is really big so i'll just disable it and the next thing that we provided is a uh, the configs so config okay so the test py is currently empty now what this will do is create a python shell and uh, load that file in it the test.py and since we have already specified where are all our scripts are it will correctly load that file and then we can have a startup method okay private startup so this method can be public also if you want to give some startup variables like you want to inject it so we'll just add this dot logger dot log and python startup okay and yeah so this will start the python shell so if we run this server and if you don't get any errors i will do call the startup function also let's just start the server and if there are no errors that means a python shell has been successfully started uh, before that we will need to inject this service in some gateway or something otherwise this service won't be created that's how dependency injection works so temporarily we'll just add the service here private read only shell uh, let's call it python python service okay and it's been added there now if you do npm start backend the server should start without any errors if uh, like the most common errors that happen at these stages whether like uh, if the python exe is not found or if you have any like error in the configuration like file path and the environment path but since we have we don't have any error that means our python shell has been running properly so in the next episode we will create some utility functions both in the nest side and the python side to just communicate data to and fro so if you have been liking the series so far please do leave a like it really helps me out and if you have any suggestions do leave them down in the comments and subscribe to be updated on the series thank you